Good morning, viewers. Welcome to NOA River State Dialogue. On this forum, government policies, programs, and activities will be communicated to you. And feedback in form of comments, questions, and suggestions will be entertained during this program. I'd like to thank each and every one of you who streamed live with us during the main edition of this program where the topic Open Defecation Free Nigeria was discussed. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your suggestions. The topic for today is sexual and gender-based violence. Statistics have it that 38% of women globally are sexually assaulted, physically assaulted by non-sexual partners and also intimate sexual partners. We have also 17% of women sexually assaulted by someone other than their partners. 38% of women globally have been murdered and their mothers have been associated with sexual and gender-based violence. With me this morning to take on this topic is Dr. Peter Emeju. He's the Deputy Director and the head of planning, research, and strategy. Thank you for having me. Good morning, viewers. We also have in the studio this morning Mrs. Rosemary Abihaz. She is an assistant director and the head of human resource management. Thank you. Good morning for having me, viewers. We also have in the house Miss Bridget Zemior. She is the Community Orientation and Mobilization Officer in charge of NOA office, Kana Local Government Area. Good morning, viewers, and thank you for having me. Thank you, viewers. I would like to start with you, Dr. Peter. What is sexual and gender-based violence? And why the sudden concern? Why? Uh, to come to reality, the term gender, sexual, and gender-based violence is a term used to denote violence targeted to individuals based on their gender. I repeat, the term used to, to denote violence targeted on individuals based, individuals or group based on their gender. What do we mean by gender here? Gender is simply what is it to be a man or a woman. It is social characteristics of a woman by nature. Uh, she's a woman, no more, no less. Now, mirroring that discourse on the historical and uh, the time of creation, because she's a woman, and that is more likely to cause physical, social, emotional, um, domestic uh, trauma or harm, or a suffering occasion by acts of cohesion, by acts inflicting physical, social, emotional, or psychological harm on the individual. Now, specifically, so to say, such sexual and social, so sexual and gender-based violence does not only relate to the woman. Okay. It is a vice versa. Okay. It is a vice versa thing uh, because men are also sexually abused, assaulted every day, especially the younger ones. Now, to mirror it down, there are five different types of sexual and gender-based of uh, gender-based violence. You talk about physical violence, you talk about social violence, you talk about um, emotional, psychological violence, you talk about domestic violence, and you talk about harmful traditional practices. You talk about social economic violence. I think these are where some of the norms or some of the or the prizes in the uh, in, um, sexual and uh, social, sexual and uh, gender-based uh, violence are clearly subsumed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Peter. You know, I asked another question. Why the 
sudden, why the sudden talk about sexual and gender-based violence? Why? Now, it has become a national issue because of the spy. Uh, especially uh, mirroring or coming after uh, the lockdown on the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. I think about much of that about we had about three indices, three figures, about 300 cases we are reported. But by the end of June, the figure has risen to 7,000. 7,000, and it's become a, a national and social malady that there is no day that passes by that we don't have one case of abuse coming from the man or the woman, coming from the boy or the girl. The issue became a national issue that the Nigerian government of Peru, I think sometimes in June, about 12th or 2nd of June, declared it an emergency, a case of the national emergency. And so it had become so endemic in the country that it had, it, 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 you know, it had become a, a, a cause of discourse in our national, in our national, our national, our national life. And so as an agency domesticated with that, the National Orientation Agency, you know, had the odd, had the had the responsibility of bringing this issue to the generality of the public. Okay, thank you. I'd like to ask Mrs. Abihat here. Who are the perpetrators of this gender-based violence we're talking about? Who are the perpetrators? Thank you. The perpetrators of this gender. Sexually and gender-based violence cut across all age groups, all groups, both women and men. Okay. So nobody is exempted. Okay. Both the age, the young, cut across all age groups. Yeah. Sexual and gender-based violence, like she said, cuts across all age groups. Perpetrators of this act are in our host communities. They are persons that are close to us. They are leaders, community leaders, they can be community leaders, they could be the youth in the communities, they could even be that teacher in the school. It could be that father, that mother at home. No one is exempted. No, it can be anybody. Anybody can perpetrate this act. And so I'd like to ask Mrs. Bridget, Ms. Bridget, can you add to that? Who are the perpetrators? Well, just like the federal administration said earlier, we are all involved. And because we are all involved, because it cuts across all age groups, we are all involved. And because we are all involved, that is why it's, it has become a national issue. Okay. Now, as a writer, as a writer to that, the perpetrators are uh, simply persons or group of persons or institutions that condone this sexual and uh, gender-based uh, uh, gender uh, path. Now, perpetrators are within us. They are husband, they are wife, just like the former speaker mentioned. Uh, they are institutions, they are group, they are peer groups, they are, they are, they are students, they are just all around us, all around us, perpetrating this uh, this act of uh, of uh, sexual and uh, gender based violence. When we talk talk about you know the husband and the wife, you know this is the cases we are talking about now. This is Abihat. What is intimate partner violence? Because we see it all around, and there's a spike in it. Thank you for that question. Intimate partner violence can only occur between partners that have romantic relationship. Okay. Okay. They may be living together or living separately. Uh -huh. okay. okay. So what are the factors also that contribute to this sexual and gender-based violence? The factors that contribute to gender can lead to that. Hunger can lead to that. War and conflict can lead to that. Human trafficking can lead to that. Drug abuse and addiction can lead to that. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dr. Peter, do you have something to add to that? Yeah, I think the the last speaker uh, mentioned it very well. There are quite a lot of yeah. factors mm -hmm. that could contribute to that. Uh, just like we mentioned here, have an issue on the tax. 
sad thoughts, could be psychological, could be social, could be emotional, um, could be trauma, okay? could be deep depression. Just like she mentioned, as a matter of fact, uh, incidents of poverty can lead to violence in the house. Now, if incidents of lack of education and information yeah, yes, yes, can yes. also lead to sexual and gender abuse. Now, incidents of deprivation can also lead that. Now, you have also have cases of disconnect between a man and woman in the house. As it were, people who are, uh, who are married but uh, refuse to be good, but fellows. You know, you have a situation where the husband and the wife quarrel, and the quarrel could lead to not just mere, even mere quarreling, altercation, serious altercation, or battling, is also mirrored into, into, into an abuse. So these are the factors. You have mentioned war. Uh, when there is serious war, people are usually kept in the IDPs. And within IDPs, the spike is also had. So yeah. people are removed from their means of sustenance. I think to just to, to, to add to that, sudden breakdown of family structures and community structures also contributes to this sexual and gender-based violence. Now I'd like to ask you, Dr. Peter, what is NOA doing to us containing this? Now, the National Orientation Agency, because sometimes they bamboo me, and you ask people what, Say no, sometimes they tell, they tell you, I don't know. Do they exist? Yes, I know they exist. We have moved, we have metamorphosed serially from men who were mamsa. Um, sometimes they oh, say mamsa, oh, it's not that for social mobilization. No, we are national orientation agency now. By the by the status, by status here, I mean by the things that put us together. What we have the acts, we have the Decree 100 of 1993. It is a decree that created National Orientation Agency. Now, this decree has also you know, gotten a cap, gotten an act from National Assembly. It's called Cap 64 of the laws of the federal uh, government of Nigeria. Principally, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the the, the, the function of NOA is to disseminate, to educate, to sensitize, and to conscientize people on what is good and what is bad, on government policies and programs. National Orientation Agency, as an agency, has been involved in other programs of education. What are we doing? In this case, NUA is not resting on its words. We are carrying a series of sensitization. We are carrying a series of conscientization. We are carrying a several series of education to bring to the public the evil, the ills of this social malady. Our community orientation and mobilization officers are not just taking this program lightly. They are cascading into several of all other to our communities, our local government areas. NUA is moving from community to community, educating, creating the awareness on our people that sexual and gender-based violence is an ill. It's an ill way that does us no good. Thank you. Ms. Bridget, I want to narrow this down to our communities. We have heard of some norms, some social norms that are violent to women. Can you mention a few of them? Well, we have the harmful widow practice where widows you know, are subjected to negative pain. Where widows are subjected to negative decisions it is not really the right thing to do and so it affects not just women, it affects the children too. Okay. Children too. It 
that affects our institutions, especially our local institutions at the grassroots. So what we are doing as a NOA grassroots officers at the grassroots, we are partnering with critical stakeholders right now, okay. especially the traditional rulers who are the custodians of the law at the grassroots, community leaders, women groups, CAN, that's Christian Association of Nigeria, and all other groups to ensure that we all put hands together and, and, and they can carry out a collective responsibility to ensure that the issue of harmful widow practice and gender-based violence and rape be a thing of the past. Because as you know, you know, we have a, a very key role to play at the grassroots. Okay, yes. I would like to ask you more on that. Genital mutilation and caught in a gender-based violence. Yeah, yes. Because it's a social norm. It is. That is why even the River State House of Assembly is involved. Okay. 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 Yes. So what other what other practices? Because I have also heard, and we've also had complaints of um, of women being uh, excluded from the reward systems in families, in communities, while they are all, while they are made to be involved in the production process. But when it comes to reward system. They are excluded, especially widows. I think this is a wrong practice. And like you said, we need to take this down to the stakeholders at the community level. We need to pay a case visit to them. You know, I think the, the, this this is this this um, activity has to be sustained for us to get the desired uh, um, uh, result at the end of the day. Now I'd like to ask you, Mrs. Rosemary Abihat. What is the consequence to the future of sexual and gender-based violence? The consequences, there are none of so, so many that we cannot count up. One, it affects the reproductive health of our women. Two, economically too, it affects the nation. Because our youth Youth that are supposed to be useful, we are losing them each day because of this sexual and gender violence. Two, we will have a lot of school dropouts in our community because of unwanted pregnancy. Yes, school okay. dropouts and we'll have the, uh, unwanted abortion too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pregnancies, unwanted pregnancies mm -hmm. everywhere. So there are so so many, there are so many. We recently had reports from a particular local government. Prostitution of, too is there. Yeah, yeah. Of children roaming the streets, you know, because we had a lot of unwanted pregnancies and all that. And you know, you know these were complaints. And uh, well, viewers, uh, we mm -hmm. have the comments coming in. Okay, if you want to add to that, the Let me also add to that. They are quite yeah. just like the last week I mentioned. The consequences of this. Frankenstein is it's enormous, it's exacerbating, it's very excruciating. Now, it has both religious, it has social, it has psychological, it has physiological consequences. Now, let's look at it from the point of view of it also has, it also has health consequences. Now, let's look at it from the point of health. She has just mentioned quite a lot. Now, we are people are raped. When you talk about rape here, rape is not just a case of a man on a woman. We also have incidents of women raping men. We also have incidents, high incidents of, 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 of uh, uh, women raping a young girl, I mean young boys. It's a vice versa thing, I keep saying. Now, in such cases, we have high incidence of, of, of diseases. Yeah. We have syphilis, we have HIV and AIDS. Now, still on the issue of health, which is very, very important, we have this issue of post-traumatic uh, 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 disorder. Mm -hmm. Somebody will have been violated, you know, the person is stigmatized. You are stigmatized, you are withdrawn from the society. Yeah, yeah. You are withdrawn, totally withdrawn from the society. And it happened to both male and female. When a woman and when a girl is raped, 
and the, 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 the information they brought to the fore, she is totally cut off. I don't want to go there, they know that I've been doing. When the boy has been found, oh, I don't want to go out, oh, they will say, ah, me, I have been also raped. So there are quite a lot of that. Now, of the note, is the, is, the, is, the, is the consequences on human and sustainable development uh, goals. Because if the, the children are the worst impacted, the children and the age are the worst impacted. And there must be a symbiotic relationship in various indices in making in terms of its uh, 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 social, I mean, uh, sustainable development uh, goals. And when a country is thus impacted negatively, negatively on the issue of sexual and gender-based violence, we are losing quite a lot on, on the on the parameter and the indices of of a uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, sustainable development uh, goals. We're not talking about the psychology for which the emotional trauma for which because we don't have time. If not, we would have mentioned this specific aspect of what, call, one one, yeah, yeah. of what we call sexual and gender based. Just like I mentioned, it's not just a thing of rape. We have a thing of battery. Yes. Beating the, the man permanently, the woman, yeah. and occasionally harm. Some some women look at some men also. Uh, do their, 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 their good side of their body. I know of an instance, there's a story that was being told, we don't have time, you know, of a woman who will normally, you know, pummel the, the husband, repeating the husband, then will be shouting, oh, he's killing you, he's killing you, and then you know, and then you know, but as they want to open the door, they will find the door open, lo and behold, the woman is sitting upon the man, and he's beating, you know, and he's beating. So that issue is uh, is not just one side of it, like, like the women who want to take it. It is a thing that is a national malady that I think that we have to actually, you know, you know, cure. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Peter. Thank you, my guest in the studio. You know, I'd like to read some of the comments that are coming in. Lots of them are coming in. Somebody is saying that um, men are the highest perpetrators of sexual and gender-based violence. Well, we have a uh, <laughs> Dr. Peter. Yes. Do you agree yes, with that? Yes, that well, it's, it's relative. <laughs> okay. Now, it, it's, it's relevant to understand that one, uh, just like I, I gave the, the definition of uh, seizure and the gender based uh, violence based on what CEDO is. Yeah, CEDO is a um, committee on elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. Now they see it as no more, no less a violence against women. I mean, women because she is a, a woman. But in find out that uh, that is, I've got given an instance. So women also perpetrate. Yes, they are involved in it. So it's not just men. We are all involved in it. Women. Okay, let, let me give an instance now. Let me give an instance. There's this case of a war. In a in a in those in those state, state, yes. you know, another graduate student that was killed, that was killed, you know, raped and killed. It's funny now, the state, the arrow is going to the to a woman who <laughs> well, is a perpetrator <laughs> of this act. You know, the way we are looking at it, even though I don't want to be prejudiced, you know, it's only to a woman, a fellow a woman who lives in the same premises with the one. Who now went connive and raise people to go and uh, kill? Yes, in as much as I want to believe that women, men are also involved in it, we are involved in the sense that the nature has put us up. Yes. And usually they say, oh, man has the power you know, to deal and for everything to also uh, bring. Maybe we have out. the men, the, the percentage is, the, is higher. Yes, I will agree with you that the percentage is higher. Okay. But it might not be. It might not be that much because you don't know what goes on in the house. In the if house a, of a woman. If a woman is fit to give the husband food, you know some women do that. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, okay, so let's move ahead. Let's move ahead. Now I have this comment from Chinwe Opara. He says, not until we begin to respect the perception and identity of each other yeah. and honor our dignity as human beings, violence will continue to strive in our homes, mm -hmm. our communities. And organizations. Yes. We also have this from Iwarilama Brown. He says, ingratitude and lack of contentment can cause 
agitation to emotions, leading to loss of self-control. You talked about that, Dr. Yes. Vita. Yes. Also, inferiority complex and lack of self-confidence in oneself also can result in sexual-based violence. Yes. Thank you for your contribution, Iwari Lama Brown. And also, we have this from Bekimba Williams. He says, parents, most cases, lose sight of their children and words and expose them. Girls also expose their bodies to attract violence and abuse. Yes. Parents and guardians should help and protect them. I'd like you to comment on that, Ms. Bridget. You know, let me read the comment again. He says, parents, most cases, lose sight of their children and words and expose them. We know we talked about breakdown in family structures. Family and he said, family. girls also expose their bodies to attract violence and abuse. Parents and guardians should help and protect them. He says it starts from the family. Well, I would just like to add that it's not just the family. And we were talking about uh, indecent dressing and ensuring that uh, girls, not only girls, boys do dress properly. I think the teachers should, should also be involved. And that's why in NOA we are carrying out the school program at the grassroots. In okay. fact, in all the 23 NGOs in, in the state, to ensure that the issue of indecent dressing is being taken seriously and our children dress up properly and come out to a care public as responsible citizens of this country. Okay, you know, thank you, Ms. Bridget. Let me also add okay. that, um, just like uh, Bridget mentioned, because that has been one of the functions of national orientation. So yes, yes. This uh, idea of conscientization, you know, has been our, our work of good. Mm -hmm. And that is why this is very, very, very important to us. Uh, I know that even before this from Bona issue, you all have been involved in cases of um, um, indecent dressing amongst children. But the uh, moderate of you know what? It has not permitted not just our, our girls, but even our women. Okay. When a woman, a mother, dresses in a little house, Dressing with an open, an open, uh, an open wear out, the job because you want to hide, you want to be on top. What are you trying to showcase? You are also calling uh, that you should be ready, or they should, that our people should look at you the other way. And so it is also not just for just the girls. And I think this is where uh, proper parenting is also needed. Okay. We need proper parenting. A parent should not just look at their children, should also be a role model. Yes, I think that's the key word. Should be a role model. How you present yourself, that is how the world will see you. How you make yourself in your family is the way your children will learn from you. Thank you very much. We have another contribution here from uh, Mrs. Ifoma Obele. She says the consequences are high on women. Because at the end of it, when they are sexually violated, assaulted, you know, they drop out of school, maybe because of um, uh, teenage pregnancy or modern pregnancy, and then the social, you know, stigma. We also have from, um, there's a, here's a question from uh, Mr. Taylor Harry, and he's asking, I would like to direct that question to you, Dr. Peter. He says, What are the red lines for prospective victims? And what is expected of the victim to do, or the guardian or the parent to do? Is there any helpline? Yeah, we have yeah. NGOs, you know, that they can contact. Is he talking about uh, red lines or helplines? Well, the same help red lines, helplines. Okay, first there are red lines. Okay. Now red lines are the fact that when a victim, there are certain things a victim should see, and you know that you are in danger. These are the red lines. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, this unusual touch of an uncle mm -hmm. on on a female on a female relation, mm -hmm. you know, uncle, uncle, you know, that kind of a thing. We should begin to watch out for that. Yeah. yeah. Now, a, 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 a girl will dress up to say, "Oh, I'm going out for a party. I'm going out for a party," and the parents watching her, you have seen the way she dressed. You are supposed to call her and say, "No." Don't go for that party, the way you're dressing doesn't look it. Okay. Or um, a situation where a girl, a, a, a girl child or a boy child is on 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 on, uh, on her on her phone and is chatting and, and laughing. Yeah, 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 yeah
you should you should be curious. You should be curious to ask, what is this my daughter doing? Parents should be able to monitor, to monitor the art of putting a, a, a what's it called, a pink codes and guide to um, and guide this in on a television station are no longer there. They train that this is how it because the technology they know you don't know it yes, they know all the people they can put the hacking can open all the channels you don't want them to watch they do what so we should be proactive to watch our children these are their lines now when they, like i mentioned it when a mother is dressing unusual the way you're not supposed to dress and appear as as as, as a mother is a red line mm -hmm. now there are other helplines quite a lot of helplines available we have feeder you know, FIDA is an uh, association of, uh, of uh, women lawyers. They are there. We also have these uh, doctors without borders. Um, I think in the next, the next edition, we'll be showcasing their, 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 their numbers. That's about the Ministry of Social Now, we have the Ministry of Social uh, uh, Works, of Federal Ministry of uh, Women Affairs. Yes, yes. Now, we also have the NAPTIC. NAPTIC um, is, the, is the national agency for Prohibiting in in trafficking uh, in, 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 in persons. Now we have NAPTI. We also have the National uh, Human Rights Commission. These are the necessary helplines that you can always the the the, the 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 judiciary is also there. So we don't want people to be so traumatized in their stigma. They should talk out, they should speak out. Yeah, there is that when thing. you have when you are abused, we're not only talking about it. We are talking about if you are abused unnecessarily, because abusing means deprivation of your liberty. Yes, abusing means they are cutting your hands off from your fundamental human rights. Yes. You should speak out. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. MOA is also here as a helpline. Yes, yes. Once you come to this our office, you want to you 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 you, you we want to know you. And then uh, we will take up your matter wherever we are. We are in the several and four local government areas in Nigeria. So once you go to any of our offices, mention your case, we bet you. You will be treated in the most confidential form, but we will not fail you, we will fight your matter. Thank you. Well, let's, let's take up other um, uh, comments from uh, Nkem Jika Grace. Said parents should educate their children and words not to expose their body while tackled. So and educate them on the implications of sexual violence. And I think the NOA is uh, in our school program that is ongoing, you know, just because of the lockdown, so the schools are, you know, off school, but, you know, this is an ongoing program, program where the students are educated on the implication of sexual violence. Then um, uh, Mr. Charles Williams Opara is saying that punishment for offenders will go a long way to curb the that has that perspective next week. So watch out for that. He says punishment for offenders will go a long way to curb the act. The relevant law should be evoked to the offenders if sexual abuse to rape must end in this country. We have another one from Chinwe Okwara. He says to effectively curtail sexual and gender-based violence, security agents must adopt the citizens' driven security strategy to enable the people to take responsibility and pass actionable intelligence to the police. That is another perspective we are going to address next week. You know, somebody is suggesting the castration of men. <laughs> wow. Well, well, uh, <laughs> One last word from you. Yes. Our well, time is running off. Well, you, you can't talk about castration of men uh, because you should, you should say that that, again, is a sexual and gender-based violence. Yes. Now, but what we have to say in this, even though we're going to say that, take that in the next edition, is building of strong institutions. They have mentioned it. Mm -hmm. But building of strong, strong institutions, if we have a strong legislature, we have a strong judiciary, we have uh, a strong, uh, uh, what I may call, uh, a, a strong uh, family and community restructuring, Restructuring this will go a long way in stemming this. I call it Frankenstein uh, 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 matter. Now, uh, so we are going to take it in the next uh, edition. But of a note, one of the important is the issue of education 
information and communication, yes. which we are doing now, now. as yes. national orientation agency. And that's why we have this forum. That's why we have this forum yes. to alert everybody that is involved, whether you are involved in it or you are not involved in it, to bring this to bring this awareness that this is what is happening. Now we have to, to be on the watch out of this. And principally, that is one of the functions of national orientation agency. And that is what we are doing in this forum. Okay. Are Thank you, you so platform? much. Thank you. Thank you so It has been wonderful, a wonderful time. Now, sexual and gender-based violence is a violation of human rights. It denies the human dignity of the individual and it hurts human development. Now, decreasing this will take the effort of each and everyone, multiple stakeholders. No social strata appears to be exempted in this. And so watch out for the next episode of this program. Every Friday, 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for those that streamed live with us. Sorry we couldn't take on your comments and questions. And this will be touched, we'll talk, take it up again next week. Remember, we're continuing on this topic, but in a different perspective. Thank you, viewers. Thank you for your time. This is National Orientation Agency, River State Directory. Thank you.